Sue and I have been on the road now for over five years, and we've had plenty of experience uh, with long, wet drives like this causing issues that you have to be aware of. And the first one was probably when our electronic control module or ECM connection back by the transmission on our Freightliner motorhome would get wet and would short out and my dashboard would go blank. That was fun. Then there's periodically when my anti-lock brake light will come on if my sensors get overly soaked. But the one that always eluded us that we did not know was connected with these long wet drives was the wet bay leak that I had that would show up very intermittently and under no circumstances did I ever connect it to driving in rain. Since day one my 36 inch long windshield wipers would just struggle to wipe the giant width of our windshield and in this episode I'll show you how I retrofitted things to 32 inch wipers which seems to uh, be operating so far a lot better. And then to wrap up the episode I'll show you a little trick that we use when we're in the Chicago Illinois area and we have to deal with the fact that there's nowhere to go to stop to take a restroom break when you're a big rig uh, unless you use the Oasis rest stops that they have, which are not particularly big rig friendly. Why don't you stick around and come along with Sue and I as we uh, take you through some more trials and tribulations of being a full-time RVer. So this is the 36 inch blade and the way it's attached that I am taking off and abandoning. You can see that the blade is supported on both sides of the blade. So when the blade is going outboard of the motorhome or inboard of the motorhome, it is fully supported. But the fact is, is that the blade is too long. So now I'm going to try this 32 inch blade and I have the bottom when the blade is being swept from the center of the coach out to the outboard edge and then on the other end I just have some fender washers. Well, another project still not done with the windshield wipers. I decided that I would probably break them off the first time I'm using them the way they were supported. So here's the little Chan Man workshop and what I'm making, actually I got one in my pocket. I have to make four of these. A nice washer that will support the sides of the windshield wiper effectively. And here's all the tools you need to do it when you don't have a workshop. Since day one on my 2014 Newmar Dutch Star, the 36 inch wiper blades just necessitated these poor wipers to struggle beyond belief. And it got to the point where I literally would never turn my windshield wipers on and I just prayed to God that I had enough uh, rain -X on there to do the trick. Now you can see the wiper pattern that has been established here which is slightly higher than what I had before because what I had before were 30, 36 inch blades and now these are 32 inch blades. 
so I lost two inches of vision on the bottom, but considering I didn't couldn't see at all because I couldn't use the windshield wipers, this is definitely a safety improvement. They're very smooth. They're not wiggly woggly. What I'm concerned about, I guess, the most is the cross section of the blade here is less than what was in there, which occupied that whole space. But then again, the blade was four inches longer. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on these to see if this is an improvement or it ends up snapping off in a rainstorm. I'm going to keep the old ones handy. I did not screw up the uh, attachment mechanism at all to be able to put the new ones back on, or excuse me, the old ones back on and take the new ones off. But I'm here to tell you, if these babies work better than what I had before, I'm going to be buying a couple of more sets so that I always have them. I always do my best projects when I'm in the State Fair RV park grounds because this is my hometown and I grew up where all of the hardware stores are. So I can do the proverbial 40 times you got to go to the hardware store to get a simple job done. I've essentially spent most of the day working on this. This is all I got to work with to fashion those braces, but as it turns out, it's all I need. When you catch an RVer like me, dressed like this in all of their old clothes, there's one of three things it can be. Either we just ran out of money because of the high cost of RVing. Video up in this side explaining RV cost. Or probably more urgent right now is the high cost of diesel fuel. Video on this side explaining what we're doing to be able to uh, survive. And in reality, once again, what I'm doing, thank God I got some tools, is I'm fixing something on the rig. All right, so if you can look up here, hon, and we talked about this a little bit, there is a wood board up here. It's actually right here, that board. And one day I discovered, uh, probably be about three and a half, maybe four years ago, that I was having a leak. It wasn't a really bad leak. It was just a slow drip, drip, drip leak somewhere in this area up in the back. And I, of course, freaked out. And I had a mirror, and I'm looking underneath here, and what the heck's going on? Well, a couple of months later, I'm on my way to Florida, and I always stop by Freightliner and National Indoor and get things fixed up at each of the places. And I had them inspect back here for leaks, and they could not find anything. And I guess I was relieved because I didn't have to pay for a leak uh, repair. I did pay for the inspection, and the leak pretty much never showed up again, or at least I didn't ever notice it. Well, when we got back to Milwaukee here, I had that same drip and leak again, and I thought, oh, my God. So I started looking underneath here with a mirror, and I found something really odd, and that's what prompted me once again to think, you know what, I bet you IRV2 is going to bail me out again. So armed with what I saw, and I'll explain in a second, I was able to uh, construct all sorts of different sentences and questions and put it into the search queue, and lo and behold, I came up with what I think is going wrong here. Now, once again, why don't you show this wood piece again, Sue. This wood piece up here, what I found was just the last couple of inches of this wood was wet and the rest of it was dry. And that told me that this wood might be getting wet somewhere in the center of the rig, but it was no longer dripping and no longer being delivered uh, uh, water. It was in fact like a sponge that you would have sitting at an angle. The water had went to the end of the wood and was slowly wicking and leaking off it and sure enough a couple days later it was dry as a bone. So that told me that the water is being delivered some way other than being a leak or a toilet 
or a shower. It had to be something from rainwater um, and or the tires. And I wasn't smart enough to figure this out. It was IRV2 when I, when I carried it. So uh, what it turns out, and we'll talk about this when we go to the other side, because we actually recorded this section already. Uh, so uh, bear with me if I duplicate. On this side, I don't know what all is leaking because this tire actually has a, uh, why don't you step over there, honey, don't hit your head. This tire actually here is got a different gadget in here. There's a big black plastic cover and that does not exist on the other side. And the reason it doesn't exist on the other sides is A, they were too cheap to put it on there and B, they don't necessarily think they need it because you'll notice this machinery right here where the full wall slide, it actually intrudes into this wheel well here. And so they're protecting that machinery from getting all rusty and screwed up. So having Sue here uh, to help with the recording, I was uh, kind of excited that I'd be able to spray it and show you what I'm going to do, but I'm thinking it, uh, it's going to end up being me videoing that in a few days because after I looked at it, I thought, Mark, uh, you really should clean the wheel wells so you're not spraying dirt and then the dirt's falling off. I want to try to adhere a little bit to the wheel well. So what we did in here is I sprayed it down with a cleaner and we're letting it dry and in a few days I'm actually going to finish the job. To show you how much water was leaking, remember I told you that wood was only wet about two inches all across and it had in fact wicked down and it was just the last little bit that was dripping off. But if I look through here where my low point drain is, right next to here to my little trap that I have here, which by the way we never catch anything and we kind of like to leave it that way. But if I look, if I looked back there, there's carpeting, and this, and the uh, fresh water tank is actually sitting on that carpeting, and I'm sure that carpeting is sitting on plywood. I'm hoping it's marine grade plywood because I'm here to tell you that that carpeting and that plywood was all wet all the way across. So uh, this was not a trivial amount of water that was being delivered in here. When we were coming up from Milwaukee a few times, and then when we were coming from uh, having our upholstery done, there was a, a stretch of about two or three days where it seemed like every day that we were traveling it was raining. So it was the centrifugal force of these tires running in water and then radially raining that water against this bulkhead wall and the sheer volume of it intruding on some old seams in here. Remember, I have a 2014 Newmar Dutch Star. Turns out that this is a chronic problem on a lot of motorhomes. I'm not going to say it's particularly Newmar because everybody has got a set of C channels for the frame that go from rear to the front, and they have to poke through this bulkhead. To be able to continue on to get the whole, you know, to get up to the front tires, to hold the front tires. So uh, when I end up spraying this with the spray flex that uh, I'll show you later in the video, uh, I'm hoping that that does the trick. Remember, I said that these frame rails go all the way through, come all the way through. They finally go through. This bulkhead here in the background you can see and those frame rails eventually come through into this area where there's another tire that's spinning around in the water and those frame rails come all the way out to the front here. Now there's been some people on IRV2 that talked about that they found their water intrusion and leak it was coming up here. The water was somehow being sprayed up onto the C-channel frame and the C-channel was a delivery mechanism along with the little plastic tray in there that houses all of the wires and the hoses was a delivery system to send water all the way back into your base. 
The telltale for that is when in your bays, periodically, there's things that are wet and you're like, what the heck, how did this get wet? That would be your problem then, that the water intrusion would be happening up here from the front wheels or from the water as you're driving down the road. My problem isn't that. Mine was more the water intrusion showing up here, and that was before I had this uh, sealed, it was showing up here and here. This carpet was wet, this back pegboard was wet. At first I thought it was what half of you are thinking right now, like, oh Mark, it's your, uh, it's your uh, overflow for your uh, fresh water fill. If you look at this, there is a, there's a duck bill right here. You see this? And this little duck bill is always shut unless it's got uh, a, a uh, slug of water above it. And then it will weep the water so that you don't explode your tank. And if I was to take this pegboard off, and I'll probably show you a picture that I'll put on the screen here after I uh, get into the editing mode. There's a hose that goes from the top of the tank and back here. And it goes up a little bit, and then it comes down before it comes out of the duck bill. And many times, if you're unlucky and they didn't plumb it quite right or your duck bill is a little bit too hard to open up, that when the sloshing of you driving around, somehow the water from literally from your freshwater tank can be splashing around in here and it's usually attributed to the, uh, the air intake and, and this duck bill arrangement. That wasn't my problem. That's the first thing I thought it was. And when I ripped all this apart and I was looking at it, because I was also working on the sea level gauges, uh, that's when I went to IRV2 and I thought, there's got to be something else where this water is coming from. And, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure I found uh, the problem. Let's uh, dive a little deeper into this, Sue, and show the folks what we're really talking about. Just want to say a quick hi to Jim and Denise. Hope you guys are still watching the channel because after all you did catch us while we had our head stuck inside the wheel well of the Dutch Star, which isn't exactly normal. So this is the finished product here with the spray rubber and this is the area of the C-channel chassis that goes from the rear of the motorhome to the front. And it's much more open on the other side of that C shape, which we cannot see. I'm just hoping that that's okay and that's not where my problem is. You can see up along this edge here, this is actually where I'm thinking the leaking has been happening. That's going up and sitting on the top of my water tank. And then it's cascading down depending upon which way the level is. And I only see it really when it tilts down where my wet bay is. This tube here that runs down, uh, there's an entry point here where this bolt goes through. I've sprayed the heck out of that. I've essentially sprayed three cans of this flex steel or flex rubber uh, in each of these bays. I'm going to go in the corner here. I don't know if Sue's able to get this. Mm -hmm. I also sprayed that thoroughly to make sure that that isn't a problem. And we actually will only be able to tell you if this was a 100% fix in the future. We're going to start traveling again on July 20th. And uh, if we have a couple of days of rain, we'll certainly report in on how this fix worked. So here we go, everyone's favorite driving, and that is through construction. But it got a little bit more fun this time around because the timing didn't work out quite right. And all of a sudden the driver, meaning me, had to go to the bathroom. Now it wasn't a medical emergency, but I could tell because we've been through here many, many times that there wasn't going to be a lot of opportunities. And I was thinking uh, as I got closer and closer that I might have to chance the Oasis rest stop, which we hate to do. You can see in the distance there, it's actually a facility that bridges both sides of the freeway. And the problem is, is that if you go through the gates and you travel too far in and there's no parking space, you have to just drive through 
and you will not have uh, accomplished the mission, so to speak. So what we do is if we drive in and respectfully there is no trucks that are in front of you or in back of you that are taking on fuel, I will not take the chance anymore if I look ahead and there's a lot of trucks. I will not drive past this fuel stop. I will in fact stop here, put the blinkers on, put the air brakes on, and I will run back uh, and use the restroom facilities, which, you know, quite honestly doesn't take all that long. And uh, Sue will be reporting in, looking in the mirrors on what's happening. And then uh, as quick as I can, I get back up front and take off. Now in this particular uh, episode here, you will see that it was very good thinking on our part because there literally was nowhere to stop. I could have stopped maybe to the right here like this truck did, but that's a pretty gutsy uh, position to be in and I normally don't have the guts. And you can see that there was literally no spot to be had. There was the RV that actually doubled up with a truck in front of them. And then there's always Mr. Moron here that really had taken the last spot that I would have taken. So I'm really glad I did what I did. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next week.